Hey guys, welcome back to my garage. Uh, I've been busy, sorry I haven't put up many videos lately. A lot of what I've been doing has already been put on my channel. It's uh, control work, I've, uh, I'm working on a couple of retrofits for a couple of customers and I have, gosh I have a bunch of machines here that a customer dropped off that will be retrofit. But anyway, um, I'm doing this quick and dirty uh, video to show you a project that I'm going to work on. I'm going to try and post progress videos on. It is a Phoenix uh, uh, router. It's a two foot by two foot router. It belonged to a friend of mine who sadly passed away some couple years ago. Left it to his brother. Um, his brother asked for my help to get it going and it had been fitted with DC brush servos and some, I think they were uh, dugong uh, DC brush servo drives and uh, anyway long story short he decided he didn't want to uh, pursue CNC and learning CAD and CAM and everything else that goes along with it so I gladly purchased it from him and I'm happy to have the machine here I'll show it to you here in a second um, but I'm gonna refit it it's already got an acorn it was running with uh, those DC servos I don't recommend DC servos to any uh, buddy that's getting into the hobby or retrofitting a machine or route or anything like that and even some of the seasoned I don't recommend them because of the tuning and everything that's involved in encoders and encoder compatibility and that sort of thing I do like uh, the um, closed loop steppers that are available I like to get mine from Automation Technologies Inc. when I get them um, and I like AC servos and I'm putting AC servos on this machine they're little NEMA 23 400 watt AC servos probably a little bit more than is needed for this machine um, but uh, they are from DMM Technologies uh, I'll show you those here in a second as well they'll be using Dyn2 DYN2 uh, servo amplifiers um, this machine already has a power supply so I will use that Dyn2 requires up to, but not over, a 60 volt uh, DC power supply to power them up. I already had one of these NEMA 23 AC servos, so I just went ahead and ordered two more, so, uh, and, and I ordered two more of the DYN2 drives to go along with it. Um, I am on Instagram, and I do take pictures every now and again of what I'm working on. It's just faster than doing the YouTube thing. Um, I don't mind doing YouTube when I have plenty of time to edit because it takes probably longer to edit a video than it is does to actually do the video shoot but if I'm trying to show the right way to do something I'll take the extra time to do it so anyway what I want to do is just show you what this thing is all about and I will try and do little video clips now and again sometimes it might be from my camera phone sometimes it might be from my little Canon video camera um, but I'll, I'll post them as I go. Um, it's pretty easy for me to upload a quickie video from my camera phone to YouTube and just be done with it and forgo the editing process and that's if I can get it right and get the words out of my mouth. Um, but anyway, so let me do a walk around on this machine and kind of give you a heads up. Oh, by the way, um, what I'm also going to be doing, what I'm also going to be using on this machine is from CNC for PC. Um, Arturo Duncan um, has been around a long time supporting uh, the hobbyist community with some really cool uh, boards and adapter cords. A lot of them he bases on a, a simple RJ45 Ethernet patch cable. And I'm going to be using them on this machine. Uh, this happens to be his uh, solution for Dyn2. Not sure if you can see that or not. But it basically plugs into the, uh, the connector, the set screw connector on Dyn2, and then there's an Ethernet port for a, well, it's not an Ethernet port. It's a RJ45 port for a patch cable that goes from this to his card that uh, just set screws or uses the header terminals on Acorn. You loosen all the terminals up, you slip his card in there, tighten them down, and then you just use an RJ45 patch cable from that card to these little devices. So uh, CNC for PC.com, check them out. Search Acorn, you'll see the things he's working on. Um, CNC for PC has uh, great support 
Um, they have some cool products, so check them out. Um, I just wanted to try it because I'm all for simplifying uh, integrating uh, controls, especially for new people to the DIY CNC stuff, and even you know OEMs. I mean, this just they're just ideas to simplify things and make wiring easier. So anyway, so let's do a quick walk around of this machine, and um, I'm going to start by building a new back panel and putting all the drives on it, and I'm going to be doing it the industrial control way. I don't use charge pumps. I use CNC's no fault uh, centroids no fault output to control a an e-stop relay. That's what I call an e-stop relay. If there's a fault, this relay opens and it basically disables a VFD and disables the uh, axis motor drives. And that's the right way to do it in my opinion. Uh, so anyway, let's take a quick walk around and let you see what this thing's all about. I'm just going to pick up the camera, turn it, and show you. So hold on to your stomach. All right, so here's the, uh, the router. It's uh, pretty well built, a little bit older machine. Um, it uses uh, round linear rails. You'll see them up there on the x-axis and you'll, if you look closely on the z you'll see some uh, linear rails right there and there's a ball screw uh, in behind the, uh, the z-axis there's the, there's the end of the ball screw and then there's the, uh, the D, DC brush servo you can see this is a plumbing fitting trying to cover up the, the encoder that's inside there um, and that was the cu coupler that was coupling that motor to that shaft and uh, ill-advised to use a rigid coupling like this because there's always some amount of of misalignment between the shafts so use uh, like an old ham coupler that's what I'll be using is an old ham coupler um, uh, that will take the torque those uh, inexpensive aluminum ones that kinda look like a little spiral thing in them they can only take so much torque before you rip them apart. So uh, anyway, just use some sort of device uh, that doesn't introduce backlash into your machine. But uh, anyway, so you can see the pretty hefty, hefty rails on the x-axis. The y-axis is the same way. There they are down there. You can see it there. Um, this used a Porter cable router, 7518, 3 horsepower. That's the way it came. That's coming off. I'm going to use an air-cooled uh, 80 millimeter body, um, basically a Chinese uh, router motor, but I'm not using water. Uh, I, just, I just can't deal with water. Uh, just too many things to go wrong. Um, this still has a pristine vacuum table underneath it. I'm going to take these off. These cleats were put on there to, uh, to secure a top piece of MDF, but since the vacuum table is under here, I'm probably going to go ahead and try and utilize it. Um, a friend of mine gave me a vacuum pump. You can see it hiding under there. I hope that works out. And I'm uh, using uh, my favorite computers are the tiny Lenovo Tiny M92P PCs. You can find them on eBay pretty cheaply. They're usually uh, uh, client computers that come back off lease and uh, you can find them pretty cheaply. So, And then this is a uh, I kind of like the uh, Logitech K400 Plus keyboards and then this Cosmo skin, though it's been hard to find this skin recently. Uh, it's got a little touchpad, everything you need basically um, to interface with the control. That is a touchscreen monitor. It came out of a kiosk, so it's an industrial uh, resistive touchscreen. Um, I found that the resistive touchscreens, one touchscreens, are far better for uh, the centroid control. Um, you don't have a, if you roll your finger you don't have the, the the chance of you know it's basically like touching it a multiple times so anyway so e-stop button kind of a side view of the of the machine here this thing was enclosed it had posts on it and it, had, it was all enclosed before and it all got removed so I'm gonna cut the post down cap it I'm gonna leave it wide open it'll be easier access to get to it um, down here is a couple of power supplies, one's for the PC and the other one's for the monitor. 
Um, a lot of this handiwork isn't mine. Wiring the cabinet is not mine. Here's these DG2S uh, 8020 08020 DC brush servo drives. Um, they have to be tuned. You've got to use their software. Um, these guys are still around. Uh, what does it say? CNCDrive.com. They, it's my understanding that, well, they do. They have newer drives now. These are older ones, and um, I understand these are slightly pl problematic. And then there's the acorn board, and then there's CNC PC's uh, board. So there are pins that go into the headers here and then bring the four axis out signals here. I'm oversimplifying, but there's a relay and then there's power to this board. And then basically, as you can see here, there's a little RJ45 patch cable that went to this uh, interface board that goes to these drives. Again, I do not, I personally do not recommend, I, I'm gonna try and stay away from DC brush servos anymore because AC servos have gotten less expensive. Um, there's the power supply. It's a DC power supply. You can see the transformer here. There's a filter capacitor and then there's the bridge rig, uh, rectifier down below. Um, got AC, I'm sorry, got Acorns logic power supply there and then some solid state relays for like the vacuum pump, uh, vacuum for the motor and so forth. Um, so yeah, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to take, I've already, I've already ordered and had a piece of aluminum cut the same dimension for this cabinet. So this is coming all out. All this stuff is coming off and then I'm going to rebuild it on a new piece of aluminum to start fresh. So anyway, that's it for now. That's it for now. Um, uh, I got to pull all these cables out of this cable carriers too and rethread new cables in there. Um, there are switches on each end of the axis. I'm only going to go with the uh, home switches um, and then use the soft limits. They work really well in uh, Centroid CNC 12. So anyway, that's that's all there is to it right now. Um, I just want to say I, I'm alive. I am doing stuff. I mean, geez, my shop. These are customers' machines right here waiting to be refitted. Um, anyway, I just I just got a lot going on. So uh, that's it for now. Talk to you guys soon.